What do we have here? The end of an era. <laughs> oh, no. This is a collection of various troikas through the production generation, or prototype generation. So, the original, the ridiculously heavy brass plate version. Yeah. Um, yeah, we are in the process of building the very last 15 troikas, which uh, I don't like to deal in absolutes. They may get rerun again, but kind of the sales have fizzled out. So this is the last of the last production batch. Uh, and we're, yeah, pro we'll probably just move on to other modules. So end of an era, this will be the last batch going out. So Dermot started them yesterday. Yeah. So a lot of sorted cores to calibrate. <laughs> Once they're done. Yeah, well, this is this is the the original, which was featured in the very first intro video that kind of kickstarted the whole thing. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, I, I built this and I'd been in communication with the guys at Dark Place Manufacturing in Portland and it was doing some freelance bits of work for, for Maleco at that time. Uh, but yeah, it was it was Josh Holly that said, that's a module, we can help you out with that. So right. this became the first production thing that kind of launched Instro. Uh, so I, th I think it was only 150 that got made. This is the only aluminium panelled one that I had, I think, of that batch. I think I got one uh, when I was on a trip to Boston. So it, 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 it arrived like the day before I flew back to back to Scotland. Right. Um, but yeah, it was all black knobs, same kind. So it was the, the CFAM knobs but with black caps across the whole thing and red LEDs. Wow, so very limited then. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, like at that point, in my mind, that was a massive production run. Mm. It was 100 mod 150 modules. Yeah. That was... Uh, Pretty mad because I, 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 up to that point, I'd been, I'd been producing them small scale, but all the panels were being CNC'd in the spare room. So I'd maybe do. I think at tops there's maybe fifteen, maybe twenty at most of the brass panels. A right. few of them I know where they are because I'm still in touch with the, the people that commissioned them and ordered mm -hmm. them. Yeah. Um, yeah. Actually, the CNC is still in the building. The CNC machine. Uh, absolutely not in use. Hello. Yeah, that's that's it. Which I think Murdo's got it living again. But yeah, this is this is the thing that cut all the panels. Wow. So how many of those did you see? You had like to cut? Maybe. I should have counted better. I think at, at the very most it will be twenty. Right. That were done, but it would be it would take me two days to do a panel alone because I need to cut it. I could because I was I was jumping between doing raw brass stock and anodized aluminium for prototypes because it was quicker to cut, but I had to go to things like zero point, yeah, I'd go zero point one plunges into anodized aluminium, but I, I halved it for brass just because the density is much, mm -hmm. much higher. So it was like 0 0.05 yeah. going through in incremental passes. I could, I could kind of leave it to, to cut automatically, but then the engraving was an absolute nightmare because yeah. the, you know, the, the, the cut bed was just an MDF slab and the whole thing was DIY built. So I kept having to, and this was all just hot glued onto it. So I'd, I'd basically have to take the engraving bit, normal it at the corner, just by eye, and then run passes. And I'd, I'd break up the G code so it would do just the, you know, the INST maybe, and then the RUO, mm -hmm. and then just certain bits. So you can already see like there's so many, especially the long cuts. Yeah. Yeah. In between, like it's it's really inconsistent because the whole thing's slightly warped that way. Right. Um, wow, that must be fun. Two days per panel. Oh, at that, that minimum, because it would be like a day I could I could leave it to cut. That was the faster part. So I'd maybe yeah. be able to cut two in a day. Right. Just leaving it automatically. And that was banking on it not screwing up and uh, not, yeah. you know, having an error. Like this one actually screwed up. There's a massive dent and hole at the, at the, the square wave there. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, something went wrong or, I can't remember if that was a manual error on my part or if it just, something, you know, there was an error with the controller and it just plunged the engraving bit like straight in. <laughs> and wow. yeah, that, that was that was depressing. That was like, because th this was the only panel. Yeah. I was basically just buying what I could afford. So I just got like a single piece of raw brass stock. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's not cheap. Yeah. Brass is not cheap, um, especially that thick. 
So there's a small quantity of brass panelled instro modules out there. Like mm -hmm. at most I did, there's some harmonies, there's maybe two ceases, like mm -hmm. first revision one. Um, one toner, maybe two toners. Right. Yeah, I, I, I retired doing the brass stuff as soon as I felt I could. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But a lot of these sales were just happening on on Instagram. Like I mm -hmm. would, I would be working on a batch and I'd just post pictures up and mm -hmm. first come first serve. Uh, yeah. That was paying the bills month to month. Yeah. Um, wow. Yeah. I, I very much designed the module around these toggle switches because I found these and I was like, that's yeah. They are chunky. That's really satisfying. So that mm -hmm. didn't make the cut going to the production ones, mm -hmm. unfortunately. But so uh, yeah, so it went from this one to that guy. Yeah. And then from that, did it go to this one with um, the big switches with the? There'll have been a, a version like I think this was an interim prototype between the brass panel original before it went to production. So this right. was like a test. No, I'm talking shit. This was a this was a revision of what became the second production. Once that's one point one, yeah. So the first one was no, no, no. This is original because all the all the SMD stuffs on the on the top side. Whereas uh -huh. the revision that I did eventually for yes. uh, taking back production and doing it in Glasgow, uh, I flipped it all all mm. backside um, like that, mm. and it was all down to uh, the T saw package. Whereas mm. this one, it's all soic stuff on the on the top side, and I think. Probably 0603, I don't think it was, it might even be 0805, no it's 0805, resistors, capacitors, so big chunky stuff. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah this is the, the last of them. Yeah, what a journey. <laughs> oh, there is one other faceplate version that I should have kept some of. Um, when I ordered the first production batch of the, the black and gold panels, mm -hmm. I screwed up the order and it came as gloss white solder mask mm. uh, with, with gold. I got the, the Enig setting right, so I uh -huh. got the Immersion Gold, but it was gloss white and yeah, that was that was disappointing. That was, a, that was the, at the time that was <laughs> a large run really of weird. face plates and then I just had to rerun them all with the matte black option. Right. Um, yeah, I think they just got abandoned at the old workshop mm -hmm. just for going in a skip. <laughs> uh, I should have kept at least one just as a memento. But yeah, should have yeah, well, put them on the wall. They'll be in landfill somewhere in Glasgow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Troika, troika. Troika, troika. See you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>